Hello, my friends. I'm glad to be here. My name is Lori Smith. This is Comfort at the Midnight Hour, and I just like to do these for people that may be sitting around and just thinking, you know, nobody cares, you know, like there's nobody on the planet that cares, and there's, you know, where is this God that's supposed to care? You know, I've been there. <laughs> So that's why I'm doing these because I feel like, you know, there's, I know there's so many people out here hurting and I used to be one of them, you know, I know how it is. I know, I know what it feels like to be on that side of things. Right. So and we can still get down even, even though, you know, things may be going okay. You know, there's always times in our life when things just aren't okay, you know, and then it's like a roller coaster. Right. So I just like to do these, you know. And I figure, hey, I've got a couple months of the internet, maybe. And I, I just give that up to God, <laughs> whether or not I do or not. So hopefully, you know, this will be helpful for you. That just, you know, I'm not offering advice. I'm not giving advice on what you should do and how you should live your life. And, you know, I'm just kind of coming along as a, as a person who's like a friend, you know, like a comforter. Just to say, you know what, I'll sit next to you, you know. And, you know, just be with you in your pain and your sorrow or your grief or whatever you're going through right so you know because there's a lot of people always have offering advice but they're no real help but they've always got some sort of advice that they want to give you and you know that's not what this show is about so it's really just spending time and i like to and i'm a christian so you know i like to talk about the love of god because the love of god came into my heart may 22nd 2007 and saved my life I've never been in the same sense. <laughs> so, you know, um, God made a way for me to, to live and not only live, but to, to learn how to love and how to open up my heart and how to, you know, to receive love and how to get help and how to live on this earth, you know? So, you know, hopefully you'll just, you know, if anything, just, you know, you can sit here with me and hang out, you know? And, um, I want to just look at a few things here we started looking at yesterday. I've had to bump this show down an hour because um, because uh, it, it's it's a little bit too late for me to do it at 1030 because by the time I'm done, I've got to wind down. And then if I don't, if I can't sleep because I don't sleep well, then um, you know, I was up to like two o'clock in the morning yesterday, last night. And then I had a horrible sleep with horrible dreams. So <laughs> um, I woke up this morning and I'm like, oh, this is going to be a harsh day. So. I had to sort of change my schedule a little bit to make it work a little bit better so I can do this for the next couple months. And Lord willing, like, I mean, if um, if I get a job or something, that'll probably change because, you know, who knows. But um, I could still probably do this show at night, right? Just depending, right? So, because I, I do need a job. <laughs> I've got to get a job. So we'll see what happens, but I'm just doing these for now, you know, because I'm, I'm hanging around, I'm studying, I'm always in the Word, and I thought, hey, why not? I'll just... Try to be a source of comfort for people out here because I know how hard it is to keep, to keep going when it just seems like, you know, why bother, right? I've been there. And it, it's so, you know, sometimes things are so painful and so horrible. It's just, you know, it's hard. And sometimes we're just down, right? And we're just like, you know, I just need some comfort. You know, where's the comfort going to come from? I mean, you know, people usually aren't that comforting. They, they might try to be, but that's what I'm saying. They tend to want to offer advice or tell you how to live your life or something. And, you know, um, that doesn't help, really. You just need somebody to come along and sit next to you and be a comfort, right? So hopefully that's what this will do for you if you're struggling and you're watching this tonight. I hope it will encourage you to hang in there. And like I said, if I can do it, you can do it. If I can hang in there, you can, right? Um, you know, yeah, so... It's a, it's a big issue. So I just I want to start out in prayer because I always do. Father God in heaven, you see all the people in the world that are hurting right now. And they're, they're in a dark place. Lord. They don't even know, you know, to call upon your name, a lot of them. Some of them don't want to because they feel like you've forsaken them. And they, they're angry at you like I used to be. And I used to be running from you. And as fast and far away from you as I could get. And, you know, I didn't want goodness in my life. And I didn't want light and truth in my life. I didn't want love because I didn't know how to receive it. And Father God, open up their hearts to receive your your love. You are the true giver of love. You are love. And all good things originate in you and from you and by you and because of you. 
And love is a good thing. And real love. Not fakey false love, but real love is a wonderful thing to have in your heart. To know that somebody does love you and does care about you. And Father God, we know that you do love your children here in the earth. You love us all. You don't want us to be suffering and struggling. And I believe that you cry when we cry. And when things are hard and we want to give up, I believe that you tears roll down from your eyes. Because you you didn't want this for us. But we're living according to the choices that we make and also according to choices other people make. So Father God, reach these people that are sitting in this dark place here tonight, just for tonight, because we're praying for tonight only, to help us to get through this night, to help all those people out there that are struggling and hurting and they don't know how they're going to do another hour or another minute or another five seconds, that you would help them to, to, to first of all, open up their hearts to receive you, to hold on, to know that, that, that there is, you know, there is a way to keep going. And that is to persevere. That is to look for the better days and look for the dawn that will be coming shortly. Right? For these, you know, wherever these people are in the world, they could be having this moment in the middle of the daytime. And so, you know, depending on where they are on the earth, Lord, you know where they're all at. Comfort them, Lord. Send the send the precious Holy Spirit to comfort them. Send helpers their way to help them out. And, you know, make a way for them, Lord. Make a way for them so that they will hold on and they will know that you do love them and that you do, you didn't forsake them and that you do care about them and that you want a relationship with them a day by day, minute by minute, second by second, moment by moment relationship with them and that you do love them. Let them know, Father God. Send helpers, send yourself, send your love, send your precious Holy Spirit in to surround them with comfort. So that they will know and they'll be like, oh, I can feel it. I can feel that's God. That has to be God. And they'll know. And then they'll realize that you are there and you hear their cries. And you hear their troubles and you hear and you know what's going on in their life because you know all things. Right? Help them, Lord. Help them make a way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we'll get right into this. I want to look at um, some interesting stuff here. This is Hymns of the Apostolic Church from Brownlee. I just think these are beautiful. So I just like to read them because they really motivate me, um, you know, to to hold on. And even in the darkest times, you know, to hold on. Because these are, you know, uh, some beautiful words here for us, right? If we just open up our spiritual ears, open up our spiritual eyes to see these and to hear these, um, you know, to help us, right? To get through these things. This is from Brownlee, Robert Brownlee. And he translated these. These would be, this is the Apostolic Church. Um, it doesn't say whether it's Greek or Latin, but it's most likely Greek. Could have been Latin. I don't know. And um, this is just the English translation. So I'm just going to uh, read what he's translated here. Or he collected it, a, a bunch of trans, a bunch of them translated is what it is. He might have translated some of them. These ones I believe that he did because there's no authors uh, listed as people as translators. So light more glorious than the sun dawns upon our fearful night, and the longed-for day begun pours its everlasting light. Christ hath risen with gladness then, hail his rising sons of men. Women came at early gloom, sad at heart and full of fears, bearing to the dismal tomb, spices mingled with their tears. Wherefore weep, the angel said, Christ hath risen from the dead. Lone disciples, all amazed, sought the place where he had lain, and they knew not as they gazed that their Lord had risen again. Mortals hail the day begun. Christ hath risen, our glorious Son. Mourners low, the Christ hath risen, Lord of life and Lord of light. Broken now is Hades' prison. Sin is wounded in the fight. Lo, we hail thy rising now, Christ the immortal King. Thou. That's beautiful. Yep. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's tears now, and there's suffering now, and there's hurting now on this earth, and there will be until everything is restored and renewed and recreated, um, you know, until until we go to be with the Lord. If you're born again, which I hope that you will be, you will accept that sacrifice Jesus made on the cross. That's all you have to do. Just believe that he is. He is who he says he is. And he's the son of God who went to the cross, took all of our sin upon himself, died, took the sin, took the punishment for our sin, and then uh, was resurrected on the third day, 
he defeated death for us so that we won't die for you know an eternal separation from god and um yeah i mean this earth suit has to go at some point um i believe in the rapture so you know i'm just a free trip historical kind of literal historical rapture person but you know hey whatever you believe the issue is, is that at one point we're going to be with the lord we're going to be standing before him and you know i'm going to be standing in the uh, not in the wrath of god in the judgment and the at the end you know when he when 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 the people are standing before him that are going down the pits of hell i'll be in the other one where i'm standing with getting my works judged because i won't see the wrath of god because i've accepted that sacrifice that jesus made on the cross for me taking my sin upon himself and you know he took the sin of the world upon himself so whoever whosoever believes on him and believes on his name and believes that he that he is who he is and he did what he did and believes that that sacrifice was done for them and, re and repents and you know accepts that sacrifice because god accepts it so we we need to accept it once we accept it we're born again praise god and then you you will have an eternity in the kingdom of god hallelujah so much better than being eternally separated from god um so you know i hope that you do but uh all i know is god's been a very big source of comfort for me um the reason i do these really is because two of my brothers killed themselves and i was suicidal for from 10 years old to about 41 and a half 42 years old so 32 years i spent in suicidal ideation my family was uh, abusive and dysfunctional and uh you know psychologically unwell, mentally unwell, suicidal, bent on killing themselves and killing each other. And so I grew up in this horrible mess and I hated life. I hated myself. I hated God and I hated everything. And um, my dad was a Christian who abused us. So, you know, I was like, I want nothing with that. I want nothing to do with that. You know, and I, you know, I'm, I love Jesus because I saw him on the cross when I was in the church one time with my friend. And, then my, and I cried because I thought, there, you know, that's beautiful. Like he would give his life for, I knew who he was. But I ran from God, you know. And when God got a hold of me, I'm telling you, nothing's been the same since, you know. I mean, as far as my peace of mind, the peace in my heart, you know, he pushed out all of that hatred and all of that rage and all of that horror and all of that horrible stuff from what I had been through. And even, you know, my own stupidity in life, my own bad choices, and just being so down and so, you know, a lot of self-hatred. And, you know, he pushed all that out. And does it mean that everything's perfect? No, it really doesn't. But what it does, it, what it does show me is the fact that God is truly there. He's the God that's there. Hallelujah. He's a true and living God. And he does care. And he does love you. He loves me. And I didn't grow up with love. So when he poured his love in my heart, I was like, I could feel the difference between the hatred that was being pushed out and his love that was coming in. And it was just so overwhelming. Like I, I was talking about it. I talk about it quite a bit, actually. I wrote about it in my books. You know, I just laid on the couch and I cried and cried and cried for like three weeks because <laughs> I needed to purge this stuff, you know. And then I had a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do to heal from the horrors of growing up like that. But... The issue is, is, you know, he, he saved me from, from, from an eternal hell. And he saved me from eternal hell here on earth, too. So love came into my heart. Right? doesn't mean things are perfect. And, you know, it, it's not a perfect walk. I'm not doing everything perfectly. And, you know, nothing's perfect in my life except for God. He's perfect. And one day, it's going to be all sweet and wonderful. And I'm looking forward to it. I really am. In the meantime, I've decided just to devote my time to the Lord and just do what I can to, you know, to do his will in the earth, whatever that is for my life that he wants me to do. And, you know, if it's nothing, then that's fine. If it's something, then I want to do it. And so, you know, I really felt the leading to share for years now, going back, you know, way back, to share my testimony with people. Because I know there's a lot of hurting people out there who don't know that this true and living God even loves them and don't want to know him. I was in the same I was I was doing the same thing. That's why I'm saying I understand this stuff, right? So just know that he does love you and he does care. Just so you know. And I want to read
feed, we're going to look at Heart of the Matter. This is um, this is Heart of the Matter, 365 Daily Reflections for Changing Hearts and Lives. And uh, these were written by uh, Paul David Tripp mostly. There's a few from other people. This one is um, 2 Peter 139. This is, his, this is like a little um, reflection. It's just like a little, you know, devotional type thing for changing hearts and lives. It says, God has given us everything we need for life and godliness, 2 Peter 1, 3. The first few verses of this passage lay out the glories of our identity as God's children that Peter says we must not forget. God has given everything we need, not only for eternal life, but also for the God-honoring life to which we have been called until he returns. So notice the tense of the verb. Peter says, God has given us everything we need. It's already happened. This is a fundamental gospel truth. God will not call us to do anything without providing a way for it to be done. If he calls us to cross the Red Sea, he will enable us to swim, send a boat, build a bridge, or part the waters. So don't forget who you are. You are the children of God who have inherited the riches beyond your ability to conceive. And you have been given everything you need to do what God has called you to do. So don't give in to discouragement. Don't quit. Don't run away from your calling. Don't settle for a little bit of faith goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, brotherly kindness, and love. Get everything that is your inheritance as God's children. I really like that. That's awesome. Paul David Tripp. I like what he says there, you know, so don't give in to discouragement, because that's my main message, you know, is, is don't quit. Because I was so tempted to quit so many times, you know, my brothers quit and, and killed themselves, two of my brothers. And, you know, they just had such horrible lives horrible lives and horrible childhoods and then they went on and to have horrible adult lives drug users living on the street eating out of garbage cans and you know just doing drugs and getting mugged and losing fingers to frostbite and just horrible stuff and ending up in prison you know, they had horrible adult lives they never got their stuff together because of the abuse and so and i know that's what it was and they, also they started doing drugs when they were very young be preteen before they were even teenagers, they were doing drugs. So, you know, they just had these horrible lives. And then in their 30s, they killed themselves. One of my brothers killed himself when he was 33. And then so many years later, my other brother killed himself when he was 36. And I was really headed the same route, even though, you know, I didn't want to do that. But I, I didn't know how to get out of the pain. I didn't, and I didn't want to do drugs anymore. I got off the drugs when I was young. So by the time most people start using drugs, I got off of them. Right? <laughs> I decided, okay, I'm getting off these things. Most people don't start them to about that point in their life. Um, I had been doing drugs from the age of like 12 to 22. So about almost 10 years, nine and a half years of, of some serious drug use. And I got off the drugs, but I still continually ended up in a place where I wanted to end my life. You know, And I... It was difficult, very difficult for me to stick it out. And I remember, you know, and then certain certain times, you know, things would go okay for a little while. And I'd, and I'd be able to do life and do whatever. And then I'd hit, you know, hit a point where I couldn't do it. And I'd go back into this cycle, this spin of wanting to end my life. And this just went on and on and on and on. And I know what this is like, right? And just, you know, I mean, you know, maybe people listening to this aren't suicidal. I hope not, you know. But the thing is, is that it's, sometimes it's so dark. It seems like nothing's going to get better. I have lots of friends who are struggling right now with all sorts of things. And, you know, sometimes it just seems like it's not going to get better. Because sometimes <clears throat> it doesn't get better for a while. You know, sometimes a couple years will go by. It just doesn't seem like it, nothing's getting better. So we almost want to quit. We almost want to give up. What's the point of quitting and giving up? It doesn't make any sense. It's like, you know what, just go sit somewhere and sit on a rock somewhere until you until you just die or something. I mean, you know, you got to keep going, right? And what I always encourage people to do, because I finally reached out and started getting help at the age of like 40, 44. <laughs> I was born again when I was in 2007, when I was 42. But or 41 and a half, but I um, didn't do any work, get, get any real help or reach out for any help around me until the age of 44. So see what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, that's why I like to do these shows to encourage people, right? Don't wait that long, man. You know, don't wait that long. You know, reach out, like, you know, and if you find people that just aren't 
you know, helpful. They're not jiving with what, you, with what your needs are, you know, and they just don't seem to be helpful. You just keep looking. You make another phone call, right? You just keep calling. You call until you find somebody that you can actually relate to or that actually understands your situation, which is mainly the issue. And you just get some help, right? I sat there and I thought, why can't I get help? Everybody else gets help. What's the matter with me getting help, right? So, you know, that's why I do these shows because I'm like so many people just need to hear that. They need to hear, you know, do not quit. Do not give up. <clears throat> that's not okay, you know. And, uh, yeah, sometimes it's just dark for a long time. Sometimes things, like I said, just don't get better for a long time. I've learned how, because I've done a lot of uh, healing work, you know, to heal from the abuse that I suffered as a child, um, years and years and years and years of work, I've learned how to deal with this situation of sitting in my pain and being okay with it. It's not fun. It's not a fun place to be. But I'm learning how to accept my situation and then learning how to cope with it, you know, and how to turn it around, you know, to do the best I can to keep going through it until things get better, right? And that's a strong skill, but it does take some work and it takes some practice and it takes some time, right? So, you know, and, and, and you know, I would say reach out, you know, because it's helpful if you have somebody to help you out to do that, right? I mean, I didn't do all of my healing work on my own. I had help from friends and from, from psychotherapists who were my friends <laughs> and other things, you know, so uh, support groups. I reached out to support groups, you know. So whatever your situation is, whatever you're going through, you know, so many people are struggling for so many different reasons, right? I'm just talking about, you know, when you're just sitting around a dark place and there's there's nobody around. You know, maybe we're on our own. Maybe, you know, um, we don't have anybody in our life who can really, who just really just wants to be there, just to be with us, just to sit and listen, you know. You might have people in your life that they have their own set of problems, so they really can't deal with ours. You know, they're like, look, you know, I care, but hey, I got my own stuff going on. You know, and then what do you do, right? Then you're sitting there just thinking, wow, this sucks, right? You're not alone. You're not alone at all. And, you know, there's a lot of us out here that have gone through that. And, I, you know, there are people that you can reach out to. There's all sorts of helplines and different things, right, depending on what your situation is. Right. Just don't give up. Do not give up. You know, it's um, it's it shouldn't be an option. Don't let it be an option. I know when I did all my one child abuse survivor shows, uh, one child abuse survivor to another talking to survivors of abuse. I was like, you know, just don't let it be an option that you're not going to give up. You know, giving up is not an option. No, <laughs> you have to keep going. Right. And so um, you have to make it through tonight right, wherever you are. And these dark, you know, dark nights of the soul moments, you know, where we have these midnight cries. That's why I call this comfort at the midnight hour, you know, because a lot of times we're, it's at nighttime and we're sitting around maybe by ourselves, you know, and things just seem so dark. And how are we going to get through the night, you know? Nobody there, nobody seems to care. Maybe nobody does care. I've been there, <laughs> you know, most of my life until I met my husband, you know. I had a few good friends, actually, that cared about me, which was really nice. But, you know, I didn't have a family that cared about me. So, you know, it's hard. It's hard to be sitting there just thinking, if I die, nobody's going to nobody's gonna care, man. They're not going to care. If I kill myself, they're not going to care. If I just die of natural causes, they're not going to care. That's a bad place to be, man. But the thing is, is that, so, that sometimes that's just the way it is, you know, if we don't build relationships or for some reason haven't been able to make a good friend, you know, they're just somebody to talk to. Then you have to call a crisis line. You have to call somebody. You know, if you just feel like you can't get through that night and you're just thinking, you know, how am I going to do this? I don't even know if I can even take another breath, right? Uh, I've been there. So that's why I'm doing these, you know, and I want you to stick it out. But I want you to stick it out for you. I want you to want to stick it out. You're the one who has to want to stick it out. And, you know, make the, make, make the attempts to get some help whatever kind it is that you need for your particular situation, right? It's so important. You don't deserve to be suffering like that. Nobody does. This one is um, Hymns of the Holy Eastern Church from Brownlee. This is another one. Brownlee just did, he, was like, he just did a whole bunch of these books up um, in like the 1800s. These are really old. 
But these hymns are from like 100, 200 AD. They're really old. <laughs> some of them are a little bit later, just depending, you know, but some of them are, I mean, ancient, 100 AD, you know, 200 AD. And this one is the Apolutikion of the resurrection. So, you know, I'm studying biblical Greek, but I don't know enough yet to really know much. Oh, come and let us worship Christ. You people bow before him who from the dead a victor rose, sing praises and adore him. Hallelujah. The stone was sealed upon the tomb and soldiers guard were keeping where in the cold embrace of death, the Christ of God was sleeping. Hallelujah. Shown in the east, the morning star, the hills with light were glowing. The Christ arose upon the world, his light and life bestowing. Hallelujah. Wherefore, from highest heaven, the powers, their songs of victory blending, give glory to our mighty God, our mighty Lord, and to his reign unending. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, you know, I'm, now that, you know, the Lord has bestowed such mercy and grace upon me, you know, I've been singing hallelujah ever since, man. <laughs> it's like, you know, he changed my life, really, you know, from a suicidal ex-drug user who was abused my whole entire childhood um, in every way, uh, you know, turned me from this person full of hatred into a person who just, I'm just so thankful and so grateful, you know, but I, but I haven't forgotten what it's like to be sitting on the other side of that, you know. And I still have hard times, too. My husband passed away five years ago. I talk a lot about it because it really did bother me. <laughs> you know, he loved me. He was like the only person on the planet that I met that really treated me uh, so well, so good, you know. And we had a great 23 years together. And then he went home to be with the Lord because he was suffering terminal illness. It was time for him to go. And, you know, he's like, I don't know what you're going to do. I'm like, well, I'm going to hang in there, hon, until the Lord calls me home. Right? And... Um, you know, it's all I can do. Right? I'm going to keep going. That was my promise to him because I didn't want him to be worried about me. Um, you know, so, so I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to give up. Right? So this is my message. This is why I feel like I kind of exist is to put this message out, even though I kind of only just recently started doing these, these particular shows, uh, broadcasts, you know, um, comfort at the midnight hour, because really truthfully, I wanted to sit on a helpline for a suicide uh, hotline, but because my husband was terminally ill, they were, they actually turned me down. They said, you know, you shouldn't be doing that with your husband being terminally ill. You know, that's a lot of pressure to be under with that. And then trying to do this and help other people probably too much. And then because I just can't get stability in my physical situation on the earth, I, ha I know my heart is fine. My, my spirit is wonderful, right? Because I'm in the Lord. But I've always got some some issue with my physical surroundings, like whether I'm going to be homeless, whether I'm going to have the internet, um, no money. <laughs> you know, it's like never can keep a job. My physical body is breaking down. Uh, you know, so I just decided, okay, I could come on and do these, and try to reach somebody right who may be hurting and struggling, and just happen to catch this right that maybe God would lead you to it, and that you would say, wow, there's somebody that actually understands what it's like to be sitting around with nobody to care you know, for real, you know, for whatever reason in our life, you know, we're on our own, but you're really not on your own because God loves you. That's why I said in the, in the thing, in the description there, God loves you. And so do I, you know, and we are all, I mean, nobody wants to admit it, but we're all family, right? And we should all be treating each other better. There should be this, this this world shouldn't be the way that it is, but unfortunately it is, right? Full of pain and full of sorrow, full of um, hardship and horrible things. It shouldn't be that way. Never was supposed to be that way. But here we sit in this mess, right? And we have to realize that this isn't forever. It will get better. And, you know, we have to look for those better days. We have to be searching them out. You know, because they just a lot of times don't just show up on their own. You know, um, that's why I'm saying it's got to start reaching out and you know making the effort to get some help, right? So that so that you can you have a better day at some point down the road, right? So important. Here, the ancient wisdom. This is really interesting stuff here. This is um, a meditational reader for the whole year from the early church fathers, 
from Ringma, Henry Ringma. This one's walking by faith. While we love to bask in the light of God's presence with us, we also have to learn to walk in the seeming darkness of God's strange absence. Streams of living water in the desert are part of the Christian experience. There's not one color to the Christian life. There's no single pattern to Christian spirituality. There, uh, spirituality, and there is no singular theological theme that captures God's wisdom. But there is complexity. There is revelation. There is growth, and there is mystery. Living the Christian life is full of color, and there are off also times of darkness. And there are many contours in the road of faith, and we often move between indifference and fervor, despair and hope, faithlessness and obedience. In the midst of this ever-changing landscape of the journey of faith, Meister Eckert poses an important question for us. When you are in low condition and feel forsaken, see if you're just as true to him, God, as when your sense of him is most vivid, and you, if you act the same when you think all help and comfort is far removed as you do when God seems nearest. This penetrating question lays bare our motivations in the spiritual life, and the answer is that by ourselves we would probably waver in the dark place, but God can firmly hold us even by his seemingly absent presence. Even in the darkest of places, we can grow in faith. So a reflection that they, uh, this is the reflection for this entry. God reveals and hides himself. When the latter occurs, we are called to great trust, attentiveness, and faith in the God who will draw us back in time to the open spaces of light. I just thought that was interesting because they're pointing out that, you know, sometimes it feels dark. I don't think God is ever absent. We are abiding in the vine and you know, it might seem like he's absent, you know, but he's not. And sometimes, you know, we can pray and pray and pray and, you know, really heartfelt prayers to God if we feel like they're unanswered. But he answers all prayers, but sometimes it's not the answer that we want. You know, so it's the issue where people, you know, we all like to be mad at God at some point. And I think he's big enough to handle it. I think he's got big enough shoulders. I used to, I always get mad at God. Because, you know, I'm like, I, you know, I, I need something good to go good in my life, you know. I mean, he saw what happened. He was a witness to the abuse I suffered as a child and all of my family, actually. You know, he knows where I've come from. You know, and then when some horrible thing happens now, as, you know, as I'm walking my Christian faith, walking my Christian walk here with the Lord, and, you know, things just aren't going well, I'm, I'm like, well, Lord, what are you, do what are you doing? You're just, you're just going to forsake me in this, you know? And I'm like, you know, you're going to have to help me out. Because if you don't, it's going to be a real problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I believe that he's okay with us talking to him like that. Because he's the almighty. He wants us a community. He wants a daily moment-by-moment -moment relationship with us. He wants to walk with us in the garden like he did with Adam and Eve a long time ago. So, you know, in the cool of the day, he wants a community. He wants communion with us. He wants to talk and he wants us to hear him speak, right? Not these ears here that won't hear it. It's this inner, you know, spiritual thing going on in the heart, the inner ear in the heart that we can hear from God, you know? And he wants us to be aware that, that uh, all things are going to be restored, right? And he's working all of this out according, you know, to his plans, but that he's going to restore all things. And we just need to keep walking by faith. And that means that we can't see. You know, we're, we're believing in what we don't see, right? Um, because what is faith if you can see it, right? That's not faith, having faith if you can see it and then believe it because you can see it. That's not faith. <laughs> you know, we need to, faith is, is believing when you can't see it. You know, that God's promises are true and that what he said he's going to do, he's going to do, right? So, you know, I think it's just kind of um, holding on against all all odds you know holding on in the midst of the trial holding on to god to the word of god you know to the to the uh, the vine the true vine which is jesus christ you know he's a living vine um you know to hold on and abide in the vine like you know the bible says that i hold on to jesus's robes with everything that i have because that's how i picture you know i'm laying prostrate at his feet you know praise god and i've got a hold of his robes and i'm not letting go you know, that's me, man. I am holding on with everything I have, you know. So good times or bad times, that's the question presented there was, you know, are we just a, uh, um, only a, a Christian and only worshiping God and, and loving God when things are going good, you know? 
And then when things don't go the way we want them to, we just don't want God around anymore. We don't care about him. That's a lot of people, you know. And I mean, when my husband passed away, I talk about this because this was very, this was a truth test for me, whether my faith walk was true or not. Because when my husband died, I mean, I thought I was, I thought the Lord was going to call me home, first of all. I thought I was going to have a heart attack, you know, just from the stress and the strain, um, you know, just grieving so hard. Um and I thought, man, I'm not going to be able to do this. You know, I thought, you're going to have to keep me here, Lord. If you want me here, you know, otherwise I'm going to go because I could feel my heart, you know, giving out. And um, I was put out with him. I was hurt. But I but I, I, also communed with him and I, you know, talked with him. And I told him, I understand, Lord, like you had to take him. He was sick. He was, he was suffering. He had to go. Right? So, but I think it's okay to be real with God because God knows what's going on in our hearts, right? He, he knows, he knows, you know, more than we do what's going on in our hearts. So I think it's just important to keep our hearts right with God, you know, and be real with him. If you're angry, you know, that's okay to be angry at God. I do believe that, you know, um, because he understands, he knows, he knows exactly what we're going through. He knows how hard it is for us, right? So, you know, we just need to, you know, open up our hearts really to receive what it is he wants to give us which is his love his mercy his compassion everything that is good you know it's light and truth praise god because that's what it's all about right not keeping our hearts full of darkness and full of evil you know that's not the way to go this one is uh, Songs for All Seasons. This is from S. Dryden Phelps. And these are from uh, probably the 1800s, 1882. Um, this is As the Angels. As the Angels, blessed story, holy like their loving Lord. Saints shall be when raised to glory, sharing in their rich reward. Safe within the pearly portal, free from shadowing cloud or night. Dwellers in the land immortal, peace and joy, their full of delight. As the angels' life fruition, life's fruition, messengers of love divine, Trusted with a glorious mission, serving still in deeds benign. To the loved of earth descending, all unseen but sweetly nigh. Guardian helpers, souls befriending, waiting for their call on high. As the angels, Jesus praising for his victories of grace. Filled with rapture, deep, amazing, as they see him face to face. Blessed home of rest supernal, no more sorrow, death, or sin. Oh, the bliss of life eternal. Oh, the joy of entering in. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, that's just it. You know, um, you know, I do remember that stuff. You know, sometimes when we're hurting, it's hard to remember that stuff. But I try to keep, a, you know, keep that in the back of my mind. That it, you know, this is suffering is very. It's for a short time. You know, then we go on to eternity, and we determine which we turn it where we're going to go, right? But it's but it's that one decision that we make. So it's such so important. It's the most important decision you'll ever make. Is where are you going to go? We get to choose, right? God's not forcing himself on anybody, right? So, you know, we need to choose to either go with him or keep shaking our fist at him, right? Um, you know, let him chase you down. That's what I did. I mean, I kept running, but he finally got a hold of me and chased me down. <laughs> Praise God. I was really happy he did because I was running myself to hell, man. I was like, I was so happy. I was so thankful, right? And nothing, like I said, nothing's ever been the same since. Nothing. People say, oh, well, sure, you're still living in the same. Well, actually, I have been living here for a long time. <laughs> uh, me and my husband lived here for many years together, and then I'm still living here. And, um, you know, it's... Uh, People would say your life hasn't changed that much. Yes, everything's changed. Everything. You know, this doesn't matter about physical stuff. I don't care about physical stuff. I've never cared about physical stuff on the earth. Money and goods and houses and all of that. That's just not interesting to me. You know, it's about my day-to-day -day existence, right? Coming from a, a hell situation of being born in hell, which is what I titled my website, Born in Hell. <laughs> you know, just growing up in this horrible situation and then, I wanted peace in my life. That's what I wanted. Peace in my walls. That's the most important thing to me is God's peace upon my life. Because I grew up in hell with no peace. We're talking not just no peace like no peace like, oh, it's just been a hard day. 
We're talking no peace to the point where it was demonic. That was going on in my home. It was demonic. Right? So I wanted God's peace in my walls and to surround me, to comfort me. And he did. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I don't let anything disturb that peace. Nothing. Nothing comes in between me and that peace of God. That's Jesus Christ, the true peace. Praise God. Make him your Lord and Savior tonight if you haven't done it. So I just want to finish off here tonight. Like if you're struggling and you're having a hard time and you're sitting there thinking, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And, and you can't cope. You call a crisis line. You do so you do the right thing. That is to stick it out. Why? Because Lori Smith, <clears throat> my voice is going. I've been talking all day now. Lori Ann Smith says that you need to do that. And so you need to do that. <clears throat> you stick it out. You do not give up. You come back and join me here again for one of my other shows and say hello. Right? Why? Because I care. I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't be wasting my time if I didn't care. I play guitar. I do other things. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I've got a life apart from broadcasting here on YouTube. <laughs> so I like to share with people. I like to be a message of hope for people. And I like to encourage people to hang in there because I know how hard it is. Right? So, you know, the only reason I'm doing these things is because I really care. Otherwise, I could be doing anything else, right? So I do care. And I want you to stick it out. I want you to, um, you know, call, like I said, call a crisis line. Call somebody if you can't cope. And if you're just sitting there and you're just thinking, man, I just, you know, I just, I just, I need somebody to just hold my hand till the dawn comes. That's all I need, you know, because the dawn is coming, my friends. The dawn is right around the corner. If you're sitting there and it's nighttime and you're in the dark and you're just thinking you can't do it, you know, through the night, well, you can and the dawn is coming, and I will hold your hand through it, because the precious Holy Holy Spirit can make that happen. You know, He's He's able to move. He's a great mover, and He can move people's spirits to come alongside other people when they're in need, like in prison cells. There's been many, many people that have written testimonies about stuff like that. And when I go to sleep at night, I, when I lay my head down on the pillow before I go to bed, I tell the Lord. If there's somebody out there that just needs someone to just sit with them and just hold their hand to, to the dawn to get through through the night, Lord, send me, send me, right? And then I go to sleep, and maybe my, maybe he translates my spirit. God can do all things, right? So I'll sit there and I'll hold your hand, you know? If you're struggling and you just, you're just thinking, I can't do this, man. You can do it. You can do it. And, you know... I can help you, you know, just spiritually through the night, but you need to reach out and get some help, right? You need to stick this out and look for those better days to come, my friends, right? That's what I want you to do. So just remember that. Don't forget. <laughs> and then I want you to come back here again for tomorrow night because I'll be doing the same exact thing, sitting here trying to encourage people to hang in there, right? Because I know how hard it is. That's why, you know, I've been there. I, I spent my whole life there for many, many years until I hit the age of 42. And uh, so I know exactly what it's all about and how hard it is right, to be on your own. And, you know, it just seems like, you know, nobody cares. People, well, there are some people that do care and I'm one of them. Right. So, you know, I just wish that I just wish that God would just comfort you. I'm just going to finish off in prayer here tonight. Father God, you see all the people around the world right now who are who are crying out because they don't know how they're going to do another another night or another day or another week of what they're going through. And they're like, oh, some, so there's got to be help come from somewhere. Where's my help going to come from? Where's my hope going to come from? Where's my comfort going to come from? They're just on their own. You see them, Lord. You see them. You see, you know, you know them by name. You know who they are and you know where they're at right now. And Father God, you can wrap your arms around them. You can send the precious Holy Spirit. To, to surround them and you they'll be able to feel your loving arms around them and they'll be able and they'll be feeling this comforting and they'll, this comforting feeling and they'll be like oh my god that has to be god because that's the only one who would be doing that and they would just open their heart to receive you and they would just want this day-to-day -day walk with you lord and they would allow you to comfort them right and to help them to do this right Help them, Lord. Make a way like you did for me. Make a way for them. You are the way maker. And you make a way where there seems to be no way. <clears throat> and that's just what you always do. You open doors that don't seem to even be there. 
send helpers their way, Lord. Send helpers on the earth their way. And, you know, send me if need be. When I, you know, lay down to go to sleep tonight, you could send my spirit to comfort them. To sit alongside, just hold their hand to the dawn. Send a helper, send somebody, Lord, but you send yourself and you comfort those people and provide for their needs, meet their physical needs, meet their meet their spiritual needs, meet their emotional needs, their psychological needs, you know, and help them, Lord. Help them so that they will know that there is a true and living God that does care about them. Yeah. Help them to hold on and, and to, to allow you to help them and also to reach out and get some help. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So thanks, everybody, for being here. I'll be back tomorrow morning. Um, you can check my, my community page. I've actually posted the the uh, the, 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 day, the the days and times for these shows that I'm doing, four shows per day. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you want to join me for some other ones, feel free. Um, and that's about it. God bless you all. God keep you in the palm of his hand. You know, like I said, if you are struggling, you make sure you reach out and you get some help right and because i want you to stick it out you know i stuck it out my brothers did not stick it out you know they killed themselves and so i want you to stick it out you know and and when people heard that i stuck it out friends from the old days of my old drug days they were really happy for me because they thought i was going to kill myself yeah so you know i want you to stick it out for for me but more importantly for you for yourself Stick it out and get some help, my friends. Do not suffer on your own. You know, if you're struggling and you're out, like I said, if you're struggling, don't don't allow yourself to go down. No, don't allow whatever it is in your life that's 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 gotten you to this point. Do not allow this to destroy your life. No, because that's what I made. I made. Uh, hi, Kay. How are you? <laughs> yeah, he is the way, the truth, and the life. All things are possible through him. Hugs to you, Kay. It's good to see you. I hope you're doing okay, and I hope God is just blessing you and, you know, keeping you protected and safe. You know, I pray for all my friends, and God bless you. And, you know, like I'm, like I'm saying, you know, you reach out and you get some help and you open your heart to receive help from God, right? Because nothing in my life was going to change until the Lord got a hold of me. That's what the change was. And so um, that's why I encourage people. You know, to let love come in, man. I didn't know what love was. I really didn't know how to receive it. And I didn't know if I even wanted it or not, you know. Um, and then God got hold of me, man. Pushed out all that hatred and all that horrible stuff. And he poured his love into my heart, right? And I just feel like, wow, if I could just share this with somebody, you know. So I started broadcasting. <laughs> so this is what I do. And, you know, it's just because I care, right? So that's what I'm saying. I want you to get some help. Stick it out. So, okay, you take care. I'm going to be heading off. But um, I just, you know, God bless you. Thanks for dropping in, popping in, saying hello. That's very nice of you. And I wish you all the very, very best. Let me tell you. And stay safe because these are these are uh, trying times right now, right, for all of us. And so um, if I if you if you need anything, just get a hold of me on my email, which is here on the about on the under the about tab. My email address is there. And if you need any resources or help, if I can help you. Or just pray. You have a prayer request or anything like that. If anybody listening has a prayer request, you can get a hold of me. You can contact me privately if you don't want it on the air. But I pray for people all the time because uh, I'm praying all the time. So this is what I do. And so, you know, you can even contact me, right? If you need help finding resources or whatever, that's what I've been doing for years for, for survivors of abuse. You know, so um, it's uh, it's important, right? Just know you're not alone. You know, and there is a God. A true and living God that loves you. And he knows your name. He knew you before the world was even framed. So don't forget that. No. And he sees what you're going through. And he does care. And he does love you. And so do I. God bless you all. Have a great night. Bye, Kate. Thanks for hopping in. Saying hello.